Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and today we are taking a look in episode 2 of our featured build discussion, our weekly series where we take a look at some of the more interesting and recommendable builds to try out. This week I decided to uh, try to go out on a limb and show something that was a little bit less meta and a little bit more crazy. So with that being said, we are today taking a look at Dreamside's Zombie Trail. This features uh, a whole bunch of stuff, including zombies exploding and cast when damage taken and heartbound loop repeating cycles. So we will begin uh, today with just a little bit of gameplay footage to show you exactly what this thing looks like while it is going, while the machine, the engines are running. And then of course, we'll take a look at the path of building as well as the forum guide, which of course those are all links that will be provided down below in the video description if you would like to replicate this build or just are interested and want to do further reading yourself. So all of that is of course provided down below. Big shout out to all <clears throat> of our newest Patreon supporters, so thanks so much for supporting the channel. And of course, if you're new to the channel, you can like, subscribe, and ding the bell for more videos just like this one. If you want to jump ahead to any of our particular subtopic headings, you can do that. Timestamps are placed above my slightly balding forehead. And of course, those are hot linked for you down below in the video description. Okay, so Dream Scythe has put together this thing that he calls the Zombie Trail. And it is nothing short of insane. I think that's the best way to describe it. So, no further ado, no further dramatics. Let's go take a look. Here he is inside a map it's insane you can see that this is a walking simulator build one that has got several auto triggers working off of it it is constantly summoning zombies anytime he's procking his cast when damage taken along with his heartbound loop recycling engine mechanic it is insane to see the amount of damage that he's actually putting out here in a caldera map so it, it's not as though this is you know uber elder you know uh, an uber elder featured video showing off a, a shaper or uber elder kill but nonetheless from a mapping perspective for a character that's got 5.6k life uh to just turn into a walking simulator and then pick up whatever treasure it is that you'd like to pick up it's pretty freaking awesome okay so that's just a taste of the gameplay if you enjoy the gameplay you really ought to go give jay waters a subscription over on youtube it's the least you can do for somebody who's come up with such an awesome build as this all right so here's his awesome artwork that he's got attached to the forum guide so he says straight up from the get-go this build is mostly for memes but seriously, if you insist, here you go, and there's the video trailer if you'd like to see it work. So here's his explanation of how everything works. The quick explanation is as follows. You use bubonic trail to explode zombies, which count as corpses using Akana's will. Heartbound loops deal damage to the character, but Maligro's lens or Mal Maligaro's lens negates the damage and even heals us, allowing for a cast when damage taken auto proccing loop. Okay. So, Akuna's Will, for those of you who don't know what those are, they are incredibly awesome summoner and build enabling gloves that came out, I believe, two leagues ago now. The special line that we really care about for this particular zombie trail build is, of course, that raising zombies does not require a corpse and your raised zombies count as corpses. So this allows all sorts of corp interaction to interact once you've got your zombies out. Now, with the Malagaro's lens, you've got all sorts of different abilities on here, including nearby allies recover 2% of your maximum life when you die. Oh boy, right? Like that's the most useful line ever. But the other thing that it's got on here is that it reflects 54 physical damage to melee attackers. Now, one of the things that's interesting about this is it's going to interact with Heartbound Loop and get things going. So, with Necromantis Aegis, 
the zombies heal nearby allies, which is you, right? So originally, if you're wearing the, the, the Maligro's lens, it doesn't really matter. But with Necromantis, Necromancer's, Necromantic? Yeah, Necromantic Aegis, your shield stats apply to your minions, not to you. So this line on here that at first looks like a meme, nearby allies recover 2% of your maximum life when you die, well, that's zombie life. And if zombies have got tens of thousands of life, then you're recovering hundreds of life every time one of them dies. Okay, then you've got the Heartbound Loop, which is a fascinating, unique, and I am sure, I'm 100% positive that you will see Heartbound Loop being featured on other stuff that we do. Anyway, this is what it says. It says, uh, minions have... 10% increased area of effect. Minions have 15% increased maximum life. And then 350 physical damage taken on minion death. So our minions are going to be dying. We're going to be taking physical damage. That's going to be proccing our cast when damage taken. And by the way, whenever they die, we're recovering a bunch of HP back. So you've got this infinite loop cycle, right? So it's pretty awesome. Then you're going to use Montregul's Grasp, which is a great scepter for stacking zombie life. You don't get as many zombies overall. You cut the total number of zombies that you can have uh, in half. However, when uh, a zombie, uh, I'm sorry, when a zombie is around, it's going to have much, much greater amounts of life. So you can see it's just got flat plus 5,000 to maximum life onto the zombie. And since we're recovering 2% of the maximum life of our zombie, that's a good chunk of HP that we're already regening just from Mantra Ghoul's Grasp, let alone all of the other ways that we're going to scale up. Uh, our our minions uh, HP through our passive tree. So lots of little nuances here. There's lots of little things that you have to pick up on. This is a build that works in its totality when the whole sum of the parts come together. Each one of these parts on its own really isn't that spectacular. But when you put them all together, you get Walking Simulator 2.0, the zombie trail. Now, the way how damage works for this. First off, damage for clearing maps comes from the boots Death Walk. By stacking minion life and minion damage, Death Walk explosions mow through monsters, right? So essentially, as the monsters are exploding, they're killing stuff all over the place. And you see this inside the gameplay footage. As the character is walking along, anything is just popping. New zombies are getting summoned. Old zombies are exploding. New zombies are getting summoned. Old zombies are exploding, right? That's your damage, and that's how that's going to work. So, note on here that you can use Ray's Specter. Um, it will work on your zombies, but the Specters will affect your zombie limit and can eventually break the loop. So, if you're wondering if you can like jam pack some extra Specters in here, just realize that that uh, Dream Scythe has actually tested that, and it does eventually interrupt the loop. So, a couple of utilities to be aware of: Herald of Ash definitely helps with clearing. It also converts 15% of physical damage to fire, and then Blade Vortex and Wave of Conviction, supported by combustion, ignite enemies and lowers their resistances. That is a key part of this. So, by lowering enemies' resistances that are all around you through Wave of Conviction. That's the uh, fiery waves that you see going out in front of the character anytime he's taking damage. That is massive for actually reducing the enemy resistances for when your actual zombies explode and deal their damage to enemies. Okay, so the technical stuff he's also got lifts, listed on here. I will leave that for those of you who want to see further. But here's what his gear looks like. So required in slot is, as we've said, Montregul's Grasp. I can't ever say that unique. I'm so sorry. Amalagaro's Lens. And then he uses a Combs Heart because why not, right? It increased fire damage, but then also, right, uh, it gives you a bunch of flat life, which you already saw. Even with Combs, this is only 5.6k life, so it's not a ton. So definitely, definitely use Combs. Then you need two Heartbound Loops, and then you need uh, Akuna's Will. And then the one thing that we haven't taken a look yet at is bubonic trail which triggers level 20 death walk when equipped so those are the mechanical components that are required now he's also got a uh, elegant hubris on here which i believe i've got pulled up over here this is the position for it it's up towards the right hand side of the witch tree near that chaos inoculation 
uh, jewel node, that's where you're going to socket this. And of course, he's socketing this very particular elegant hubris in order to give a whole bunch of minion life and minion damage. If you don't have that particular elegant hubris, that's okay, but he's got that listed here with the specific number. So if you're looking for it, you can at least search it uh, on a trade site or search if you've already got it uh, yourself. Now, let's take a look at his skill tree and his path of building. So, first off, the first thing that you're going to notice is he's got to come all the way over and grab Necromantic Aegis. Again, for those of you who are confused why he needs Necromantic Aegis, Malagaro's lens will not work <laughs> for the zombies dying and, and then thereby giving their HP to you. It will not work unless you take Necromantic Aegis. So you need to take Necromant Necromantic Aegis. It is a required passive for this particular build to work. Speaking of other particular keynotes that are needed, minion instability. Minions explode when reduced to low life, dealing 33% of their maximum life as fire damage to surrounding enemies. Hey, this is where our damage comes from, right? It comes from the zombies exploding and blowing everything up around them. So we need to have minion instability built in. Also, you'll notice that he's got lots of stuff on here. I'll just do a quick search for minion life. Like, pretty much, what, anything that's within decent, reasonable get range, like reaching range of his build, he's going to grab. He doesn't come up and grab all the rest of this minion life. I think you probably could. He's got six, what, yeah, six uh, passives that are still here. So what is that, level 94 character or level 92 character? You definitely still could go out and grab those with additional levels, but it's by no means necessary, right? It's by no means necessary, dep depending on the map tier that you're trying to clear with this total meme of a build. Anyway, so going on from the minion life, minion life is definitely going to be something that you're going to want. Elemental overload, of course, is something that you're always going to want just because of the increased flat damage that you're going to get. You're not scaling crit in any way, shape, or form. So why not get Elemental Overload? Then coming all the way down to the bottom, you're going to want to get Unwavering Stance just because there's no other way for us really to fit in unless you're going to like craft something. No, I don't even think crafting uh, is going to be an option because if, if you normally want to craft something like, you know, move speed boots and uh, cannot be chilled, cannot be frozen on your boots, well can't do that because you got to use the bubonic trail so he comes all the way down to unwavering stance so that way he cannot be stunned because being stunned would be an instant death mode for this build if you're stunned and you're stun locked it may interrupt the entire loop itself of the auto casting and then you're not doing any damage and so then you're going to be taking a whole bunch of damage from any enemies that are around you other than that, most of this is just life, and then fire damage, and then minion damage. Those are going to be the things that you're looking for. Of course, the ascendancy of choice is Necromancer coming up and grabbing Plague Bringer, along with Corpse Pact, along with Mindless Aggression, and Bone Barrier. Now, one of the least meme aspects about this entire build is that you could probably just straight up level this as a regular summoner, right? This is a pretty regular summoner looking tree. I mean, other than going down and grabbing Necromantic Aegis, right, which you only need to grab once you're ready to make the full swap over in your build to make the entirety of your build work, you don't need to go grab that. So you can simply grab some additional minion damage. You can come all the way over here on the left side, grab Spiritual Aid, grab Redemption, grab Divine Wrath as well if you want to do any kind of self-casting damage yourself. There's lots of options over here as you're coming over onto the left-hand side of the tree, whether or not you want to self-cast and level up, let's say you're speed leveling with Brands, or if you're just leveling with Zombies and Skeletons and some Spectres. There's plenty of minion options. You can even spec into Spiritual Command and Sacrifice if you need to, and then unspec out of it later when you're ready to set up your entire loop. Again, here's his itemization. We've got Montregul's Grasp, Malagaro's Lens. He's got a rare helmet, which is going to fill in life and resistances. Then body armor, he's got Combs Heart, gloves required in slot Akuna's Will, boots required in slot Bubonic Trail. Then for his Abyssal Jewels, you'll actually notice this on his Abyssal Jewels. Of course, you're going to be stacking life, but then also you want to stack minion percentage life. This is big because, again, we we're already getting 5,000 flat life from our Montreguil's Grasp. So that's a ton of life. So if we can scale that up with percentages, the more the merrier. His amulet 
is pretty pretty funny where he's going with the aspect of the spider amulet but then mostly uh, he's going with a whole bunch of resistances as well as the uh, crafted mod six percent of damage taken gained his mana over four seconds when hit that's just a great defensive mod but especially for something that's got an auto loop like this it's even better then he's got double heartbound loops then his belt is going to be a rare belt with of course life as well as resistances and then in his flasks he's got a Ziri's promise but then other than that he's just just got utility defensive flasks whether that's instant recovery bleed immunity freeze immunity a quicksilver for movement quality of life and then instant recovery again removal for bleed and then other than that the rest of these jewels are pretty generic it's just increased life for him some increased resistances for him the character himself and then again focusing in on minions having increased percentage maximum life is the key so that way his particular zombies the couple that are going to be trailing have got as much life as possible so that way when they do explode they explode very largely okay so that was dream Side's zombie trail uh bubonic trail build i think this is probably the most unique uh, version of an auto walking build that I have ever seen there are a couple others that are out there that are definitely noteworthy but this particular setup with death walk and bubonic trail playing off of one another for massive explosions and interacting with the corpses that are your zombies thanks to akuna's will and then of course the heartbound loop the well-known secret of getting a, you know a cast when damage taken set up to constantly be going off i think this is a really really cool and ingenuitive way of setting this up anyway if you enjoyed this build go ahead go give it a shot if if you don't want to try it out in a league maybe you've got an additional character an additional like level 80 witch or something that's sitting over in standard go give it a shot it gets two thumbs up from me i really really have enjoyed messing around with this build myself uh but for me i'm usually dying in like tier three maps but hey we all can grow and get better as we try these different builds out so thanks so much dream Scythe, for showing off your build and for everybody else if you've got comments or feedback of course you are welcome to drop a comment down below other than that i hope this week is the week a mirror of calandra drops for you Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.